right, guys, I'm back to talk a little bit about Dallas. You know, seeing as they're leading the NFC right now, one of the best records in the NFL. Dak Prescott, of course, going along again, uh, leading the team to another victory. The team really responds to him, and that's been good to see as a Cowboys fan. I'm glad to see that the team still rolling along, even without Tony Romo. Uh, I do have to uh, offer... The criticisms as well as the praises for the team, and specifically for Dak, because being an Alabama fan, I'm seeing some similarities between how the offense is playing with Dak with how Jalen Hurts has the Alabama offense playing, mainly with how they do passing the ball beyond 10 yards down the field. Now, to start off, I did see a pass from Dak to Des Bryant down the right sideline, in which he threw the ball perfectly, hit Des Bryant in stride, and it was a beautiful pass, and it was great to see. And he completed it, showing that he does have the arm strength and the ability to hit those passes. The issue is that he doesn't do it consistently. Um, and that'll come with time, because he's a rookie. He has to learn how to make those throws down the field consistently and accurately. And some guys actually never do, and they end up becoming great short to intermediate pass. Uh, but that will be uh, injustice to this offense not to take advantage of some of these receivers. And the reason why I say he needs to kind of work on a few things is because there are times, especially I noticed on crossing routes, that I guess they need to work with him on the timing and the crossing routes. Uh, Des Bryant had to wait on the ball on the left side of the field, be on the left hash mark uh, one time on the crossing route. Cole Beasley had to wait on two of his, I think he had like maybe three or four catches the whole game. And on two of those were crossing routes, and he had to wait both times he was going to the right. And he had to slow down and catch the ball. And if he had been hit in stride, he would have been able to continue running and possibly get way more yards than he did. He actually had to slow down and wait on the ball. So Dak has to work on being able to hit those receivers in stride down the field with accuracy. What I do like about Dak, though, is that he doesn't get flustered. He doesn't get worried. He, he steps up in the pocket and he looks for his receiver and throws it. And he'll take the check down when he needs to. And, and he, just a smart, heady, level-headed guy. And you need that at the quarterback position. And he's a great leader. You can see why the team responds to him so well. He just has to work on those aspects in which I talked about with becoming a greater passer. And that is one of those things that people are talking about when they say Tony Romo brings another dimension to the team. Because we know for sure that Tony can do those things. He can hit those passes, uh, the ones that Dak seems to not hit as efficiently or effectively yet at this stage in his career. Um, I know for a fact, you know, just from watching Tony Romo, I've seen him hit those intermediate passes. I've seen him hit those deep passes. And at the end of the day, because uh, I'm tired of talking about it at this point of, you know, people keep bringing up Dak versus Romo, Dak should start, Tony should sit, or Tony should start, Dak should sit. Forget all of that. At the end of the day, the Cowboys have the best quarterback situation in the NFL. Have the best quarterback situation in the NFL. We have the future with Dak Prescott. We have uh, a great veteran who is current in Pro Bowl caliber player his whole career. Uh, either, depending on what they do going forward, either backing him up or starting. Uh, and we have a experienced AFC Championship game quarterback in Mark Sanchez. Like, a lot of people forget that in his first two years with the Jets. He had a pretty good defense and a great running game, but it doesn't take away from what he provided for the team because before that, they were in futility, and then he got there and they improved. They went to the AFC Championship game two times with Mark Sanchez, so we have an experienced uh, backup, a very good backup. So we basically have two starters, Dak Prescott and Tony Romo, and we have a backup who's gone to the AFC Championship yeah. game. You can't beat that. And at the end of the day, uh, I'm fine if they keep starting Dak. I'm definitely happy if they keep starting Romo. Uh, it's just, you can't go wrong. Until later on, I think one issue that could come up will be that if teams start squatting on Dax, Dax um, short and intermediate passes, that's going to force him to make some passes down the field. Now, the question is, would I be able to do that? Because Dak has help. Something that Carson Wentz at Philadelphia doesn't have a lot of. He has some, but not a lot. Because we can run the ball so effectively with our offensive line and with our running back with Ezekiel Elliott. And defense has been playing pretty well, not necessarily in terms of yards allowed, although we're right in the middle of the pack of the NFL in terms of yards allowed at 16. But scoring defense is seven. So we're stopping teams from scoring a lot of points. 
um, we'll bend but don't break. And there's times where we just get people off the field, even without a pass rush. So Dak has some surrounding cast members that help him out a bit. And that's good. Like I said, the issue is if, if some team is strong enough to be able to stop the run and squat on Dak's uh, short passes, that's going to force him to throw down the field. And it's going to be interesting to see how he responds if they do that the whole game. Uh, I have confidence in him. I think he will be able to do that effectively. I'm not sure if he'll be able to uh, evolve enough to do that this year. We'll see. But in those situations, that's where I think having Tony Romo uh, is vital to this team's success. I was uh, I agree with someone's assessment that says if we want to win a Super Bowl this year, then you want to go with Tony Romo. But if you just want to continue to build for the future, then you keep starting Dak. And I think I agree with that because I think Tony Romo gives us the best chance. Um, the chemistry thing, I don't buy that. I believe that Dak does have good chemistry with his team. I think that Tony – oh, no, it's not that I think. I know <laughs> Tony has chemistry with this team. This is the same team. This is his team. These guys have played with him. They 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 know him. They I believe they put him in. It won't be a change. Tony Romo with these same guys has gone uh, into the playoffs in his last full healthy season. And I believe that he'll be able to do the same as long as he's healthy. I don't want Jerry Jones or, or anybody on the team rushing him out there. He has a wife and a kid to go home to. I don't want him to get out there, injure himself again, and leave this game in a wheelchair. That would be unfortunate to see. So, Tony, get healthy. Uh, when you get back, you'll just make this team even stronger than what it is right now. So, the Cowboys situation, I'm very happy with. The quarterback situation is not a controversy. There's no need of talking about who's starting over who. It's just a fun time to be a Cowboys fan.